loving what you're hearing? Well, the establishment hates it. And right now, they're conjuring up new ways to try and censor RCR. To ensure you never miss a beat of the hard-hitting news you've come to know and love, make sure you're on the RCR mailing list. Get connected now at realitycheck.radio forward slash email. Matt McCartan, welcome back to The Crunch. It's uh, good to have you back. Well, thank you for having me. Well, Matt, um, there's a lot of things going on in the world of politics, and a lot of people look at things from you know, a centre perspective or a right-wing perspective. And I thought to myself this week, you know what, I think we need to get a dark arts practitioner on the line and talk about some of the things that go on behind the scenes that give us an insight as into politics from a left-wing view. And it doesn't mean it's right or wrong. And you and I have known each other for a long time and operated in the back room on various different things, so sometimes against each other, but we've always had a convivial uh, ability to communicate with each other. Of course. Of course. Now, you know, the most, um, the most uh, thing that people are talking about at the moment is, uh, is the US election. Yeah. All right. Now, if you've got a dud leader, and you're an advisor to that dud leader, and you have a debate debacle like what happened to Joe Biden, what would you do? Well, it's obvious what needs to be done. You need to step down. Yeah. Uh, um, but as Dale Axelrod said, who's another campaigner, and he was the one who ran um, Obama's successful campaign, his first one, you know, I, I liked his summer, his good campaigners do. They make it very simple. Well, what do you have? Uh, denial, uh, delusion, and defiance. Mm-hmm. And then you've got all three. And what you have is, is, is Mike Moore, the left wing um, filmmaker, uh, was saying, um, I think, yes, yes, yesterday, it's like him going on that show to do that interview or, or, or that debate was elder abuse by his. I actually think that Biden's hand hammers are amateur. And, I, and I'm sure you have to agree with me, right? As people that we've run campaigns. Dale, his advisor must be a small group who he's got into group thinking and with the wife. See, American politics is funny. They have their partners as kind of co leaders, you know, where we don't have that tradition, thank God. Well, and, not every case. I mean, Ronald Reagan had Nancy Reagan, but she was, uh, you know, had a back, she took a back seat to everything. Well, a lot entirely. She 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 did go and see the hor- the horoscopes, and they would be trying to convince them of certain things. So, and when he got out Alzheimer's, the only stage of Alzheimer's, in fact, she was a very important player. You know, and what they've got with first lady, which they all have been up to now, they get their own office in the White House with staff. I mean, that, that's just, that's just astonishing, and the influence they have on it. And so Jill Biden is playing in way out of line and sort of influence. On Biden, you know, Christian. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, last week I had I made a comment about uh, Jill Biden's the one most responsible for pushing dear old Joe. I mean, I, I you know, I don't agree with his politics, right? But hmm. he does look like dear old Joe Grandpa, who's forgotten everything and well, yeah. being pushed forward by Jill Biden. Anyway, this commenter said to me that it was the most appalling thing that I've ever said. Um, oh. You know, bringing in his wife. And I thought, hello, have you been watching and paying attention? And you've just said that, you know, the First Lady has an office in the White House. And you see Jill Biden pushing Joe Biden forwards at every event. Uh, She introduces him. She winds up um, his speeches. She guides him on and off the stage. She's involved, right? Jill, she's what they call... You know, we call the, um, I'm not, I'm, I don't know what the term is these days, but you call them the, the body man, right? And it's the person who's with the candidate the entire time, making sure they don't trip, making sure they get to the right place, make sure they don't look in the wrong direction, making sure that they speak to the right people, if it's right. That's what she's doing. She's the personal campaign manager. That's what she is. And she's not, um, she's not a, a, a she's never been a candidate herself, she's never been in politics before this before. And they just said, tried what? She was an intern, though, wasn't she? That's how she got to meet Joe Biden after his first wife died. I didn't know that. But that didn't mean, because we know about a, full, a former president sort of an intern that doesn't go well. But 
what we've got, you see, and they say, oh, we're going to have a, the photo shoot with his family at Camp David. And the son goes, you know, the one who the wrong, the wrong son died. Um, and so Hunter goes along there. He's the most senior of the, uh, the fa- family there. And him and Jill are pushing his days in. And of course, everyone goes, what are the granddaughters all supposed to do? Oh, Granny Pop, don't run. They're not that, you know, just, it's just a group thing. And that's what's going on the whole time. Everyone can see it, the emperor without clothes. And they will lose, if he stays in, they'll rip the par- party apart. They will go into a state of depression and they will lose. And his comments of saying the other the day when he was asked, I'm just going to do my best. As long as I've done my best, if Trump wins, well, then I just know that, that I'm okay. What? What? And, and it's like that, 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 that arrogant, that humorous. Look, I've always thought that Biden, he comes across with his grandpa, you know, and he's and he's honorable and that. But, you know, you've watched him for years until you have, and I have, right? He's been running for president since he was 93, and, um, you know, and Obama got him in. You know, he got him in, he got in, he got to at last. And, you know, and we, he, and, you know, he, he's had, I think, quite a success from a center left from a point of view. But I catches up with us. And, you know, the Americans don't know when to leave the state. You know, they keep staying. We don't have that culture here in the country, right? And I, I and you, you're listening, some of the practitioners will know, and you're the know, America being the first democracy, you know, it's really got an imperial presidency with the checks and balances, but the checks and balances don't work. And they never would work. Um, and what what the rest of the Western world has to varying degrees, there's, there's parliamentary democracy. So if someone is gaga, the caucus can replace them. And they do. Because they, and if there was a vote of all the elected reps, in the Democratic Party, that Biden will be out and out. No question. But because of them, they say, so we've, we've tied all these, um, the delegates at the convention, which is the group that votes on it officially. So that's just a rather, rather stamp. But they're all done to them. And then he says today, well, they can challenge me at, at, at the convention, which you know, Phil, well, they can't. It's crazy. You know, and so he has also now been defied. And that's a new way for him to be exposed, I think. And look, so it's just a train wreck. I think he will be dumped. I will, he will uh, capitulate. Because once those Democrats all see they're about to lose their seats, that will give them a photo. See, the thing is, is that they've got the 25th Amendment, but that is damn hard to use to get rid of a president. Well, they can't rid of president. Like, they, they, even when you impeach them twice, when you go to the Senate, well, they kind of, but yeah, and I know it's a different thing, right? You need 66 of the, of the court. They're it's never going to have that. The other thing about that, 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 um, that what, what do you call it? The chapter 20. Yeah, yeah, where they um, think, but that means the cabinet's got to initiate that. Well, no, actually, it's the vice president. The vice president has to go to the cabinet and oh, the cabinet has okay. to take it to the floor yeah. of Congress, right? So, yeah. so, so you know how political process works. You never go for the king unless no. you can get the king, right? Yeah. So, so okay. that means Kamala Harris, who, who wouldn't know how to count to 10 if, even if she used her fingers. Well, that's a bit of a and the count. Yeah, well, you're being a bit mischievous here, but she is part of the problem too. She's not, see, vice president, in my view, um, yeah, they, they get handpicked because they're safe. And they should do a lot of work to take the load off the president, shouldn't they? Well, um, we know it's all just the show. Vice presidents have no power, they just there. But Biden is over on the other side of the country, picking someone from the west side, a woman, someone who's not white. You know, she ticks the boxes like you are now the um uh the the the, the advice. Um she should go with well, them, she should have a complete clean uh, 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 you know, uh, I know it's late, but Jacinda are doing in our country with the late um uh pick and she won. So you can still win at a late because it changes the whole thing, you know, new press, you know, um 
trying to be lost for both of them. Yeah, yeah, they work well. Yeah, you can do that. But the problem the Democrats have got is that the sunk costs so far of the Biden campaign. And the reality is the, the, the front runner, really, from looking at everybody. I mean, there's a whole lot of people that you and I could name some names and no one would know who they are, right? But if we said Gavin Newsom, everyone would know he's the governor of California. He's the one who's actually out there. If you look at his um, feed on X and on Facebook, he's actually making us a, a, a play to be the candidate. You know, yeah. he, he, he's giving I mean, him the election for three years. No, no, exactly. It's surely not. We'll get here, all those friends going on the Fox News and debating with the Santas and around the country doing ads around the country. He's just still doing it for the good of California, I'm sure. It's like Win Winston. How have you been the uh, MP for Carol? I'm not ploppy. Um, so Gavin is out there every Sunday being very supportive of the president if the president wants to continue. Yeah, but he's the governor of California and he's and he's making speeches in Philadelphia. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if people would love to share his uh, love to, to the country about the greatness of California. No, you're absolutely right. Look, 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 he is the one. He's the brand. That's, that's who. Now, a lot of people don't well, won't like it. It doesn't matter, right? What they, In my view, if I was uh, had a play here, I'd go with him. And I know all the problems they can point to about Cal, Cal, California, obviously. But as you know, with a campaign with Trump, none, none of that matters. What is about the scrap? You know? And it's about... The um, someone who can fight, right, you're not, and what the Dem Democrats they want a champion, send us your champion. They send you out a a, a wheelchair bound guy who who shuffling around. That's your champion. They do. Trump is um, yeah, good, you're on oh, my side of oh, Let's face it, but Trump's a bully, and he knows how to bully people very very well. well he's done it all his life, right, and got away with it. So he's the thing. It's a winning thought to form out. Everyone is scared of it. Newton is not. He'll, he'll live on it. So what you got is a guy who's young and vibrant and, you know, tough nut. Um, and, you know, put up himself, too. We're we'll even we'll we'll for a politician. Um, but I think they need someone like him. There are some others that won't bore your audience with names because, you know, they're just names. There is one other name, though, um, Matt. Uh, and again, it was a reader who said, oh, Cam, you know, your analysis of the United States when I was talking with Olivia Pearson uh, your analysis of the presidential race was typical, just simple, red versus blue. And, you know, what about Kennedy? Now, you know, you know and I know that that my analysis of what's happening in politics is never just red versus blue, right? There's nuance to everything. Ooh. But yeah, what about Kennedy? Is he a dark horse? Could the Democrats perhaps select him or make him uh, uh, on the same ticket as Newsom? Or is he too much of a dark horse or a, a maverick to to try and... Uh, corral. I mean, I think some of the things that he says is why are you saying this? Oh, what a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, some of the things he says are. Uh, Everyone uh, says, you know, why can't we just all hold hands and just have a nutcase come in and, um, you know, in the basket case, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a drunk convicted fat fellow, you know, and still taking them like that. And he, you know, he, he goes narcissist, you know, why can't, and his vice president, very well, Bob Dollar, his running mate. That's like keeps them going, you know, like you've got a lot of I think, with the last serious third party plan. Yeah, and we didn't get And at least he was self-made. He vote and touched to some of the issues, which people want. And you've got to give him some respect, right? And, um, but, no, he's not, look, these third party candidates are running. He's not the only one, but he's obviously the one with the brand. Um, and the money now. And, um, and that's not because of them, it's because of Biden. Those, those candidates are seen to left candidates, by and large, right? Mm. And, uh, you know, and um, what, there's about four of them now, five now, that old Mariana or whatever name has come back, 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 back in again. That's because everyone knows that, that Biden, the Democrat candidate, is weak. And so it's playing away sort of at, at you. Funny enough, with Kennedy, just as many Republicans will back with them on the back Trump. They can't bring themselves to vote for a Democrat. So here's a general protest campaign candidate. Look, vote like split it really, isn't he? Well, he is, but it's not about him, right? It's about the dissolution vote. And you don't have a parliamentary sort of system or like we had at NEP, you had weight to vote, throw people, 
uh, I can't bring them to the boat for the other team. So they'll give it to him or one of the uh, uh, others. But that will hurt Biden. When Biden's post, and anyone who, 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 who gets up and puts their pants on the correct, correct thing, no, 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 you know, when they get up in the morning, like everyone knows that Biden. Um, now, the only reason that Biden has only chance of succeeding is not because of him, but because we and Trump vote. That's the only reason. It's all about Trump, not about Biden in terms of the fear. But by Biden, is, um, he, he, he bugger them right really, apparently. The Democrat strategy seems to have been to use lawfare, to smear Trump, to to denigrate him, to do all of this, and yet he's still forging ahead. And, and, yeah. and, 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 and going, so you'd have to say from a strategist point of view, tying someone up in lawfare means that they get unearned uh, free publicity where the public only hears Trump, 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 Trump on the news. Mm. That is, in in my experience of, you know, 40-odd years in politics and you're about the same, that, in my view, is the worst thing that you can do is to have other people talking about your opponent all the time in the media. Well, I, I well, yes, I think that, but this is it, is that it feels a lot like an amateur era than in, in the fake in terms of campaign, right? You know, having... Trump on trial on on the on the case, yeah, you know, and and in New York, um, you know, it, it feels like you know, um, it was a parking ticket ticket case. With if, if he hadn't have been running for the presidency, they wouldn't have made it. Right, they wouldn't have. And, and people know deep down they wouldn't have done it. Now, if you guilt guilty guilt and all these things, absolutely. But but to the alienated voter base. Which the Democrats have pushed away as well. Like a lot of these people who vote for Trump used to vote for the Democrats as well. That's working class. And so recruitment against, and that's all over the world, including this calm country, right? There's working class people used to be on the left now, don't see it as their home, but they've pushed away. And so what's happened is this resentment and against, against the system. And Trump is that kind of unreasonable voice that goes against it. And I thought, well, someone is, is, is expressing my, my, my anger and hatred of the system and of the people who run it and, and things. So what's happened is that when Trump gets up, as, as you know, and all your listeners are aware, is that every day in Washington, in, in New York, he was on Time Time News all day with his message. Now, the fact that that was true, not didn't matter, right? Because he wasn't a rebuttal. It wasn't like two people come out, you know, Trump is guilty, he's a crook, he's going to jail, you know, and he's all the reasons why, so they get their five minutes of their messaging. Or it was Trump coming out and saying, this is a scam, I'm a good man, I'm a lead set up and gone, so It's all you heard, day after day after day after day. And then they get surprised by no guy to be taken off them. Okay? Well, that's the thing is that, is that if you look at Nate, Nate Silver, one of the best pollsters in the world, right? Yeah. yeah. He says... The, there is, the, it's a baked in result for Trump, yeah. right? Because everyone knows he's a rat bag. Exactly. Everybody knows he's a braggart. Everybody yeah. knows he's a bully. Yep. And they don't care. That's right. Of course, the hatred of those who rule them is far out, right? They actually enjoy watching the elite swim. And that's them. They love them. Right? You're watching a scallywag and a rascal. Yep. Um, campaign, doing the same things every election yeah. and getting in, and it's a delight, you know, <laughs> for people but like you. see a lot of that politics, but it's driven by, you know, the, the, the resentment of people who have not done, who have been pushed out of the growth, near the new world order, promoted by the left as well as the right, yeah, the elite right. Not 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 the rank and file right, but the elite right and the elite left, right? And so the yeah, free trade is good, you know. Yeah, you know, we 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 can free it up. You know, technology is all good. AI is good, you know. Now the fact is that you can't work and earn a living and have the manner of uh, being able to raise your family is not important. You see, it's your fault. It's your fault. And so what we have is is, is, is not a left right fight now. It's the have and have not fight. 
And yeah, I think, I think on that, you and I agree, Matt. You've got, come full circle and I've come full circle and we've ended up pretty much at the same place where we've got these ruling elites in these large parties that actually ignore what is going on in society. In, in a classic cases, Chris Hipkins last weekend standing up and saying, you know what, um, you know, I'm going to listen to Aucklanders. What, well, well. Hang on, mate. That's the same playbook that every opposition since um, you know Noah was a boy has used. It's like, let, let's go out and do a listening tour. You have a look at who did it. Bill English did it, right? David Cunliffe did it. Phil Goff did it. They, they've all done it. And how did it work for them? You're not particularly well. None of the above. That's like, as you know, right? It looks patronizing because it is. Mm. No one believes you, you believe that, uh, because you're from Wellington, so they don't believe that you care what all can you just want to pretend. Now, fear, fear, what, you know, the Jew and I would like to think that we can give them advice, but I just use. What people want to hear is, yeah, we got it wrong, and here's how we got it wrong. If you know with what you got wrong, you got no business in being in politics. Well, I will go and speak to the head, to speak to the people. You wander around and speak to people who agree with you um, or are polite to you because Kiwis are polite. So no one, you don't really get through. Right? What you've got to do is you've got to know, if you don't know why you've lost Auckland, then you don't have the privilege of being a politician. You're right, though. Kiwis are polite. You know, in all of the dirty politics years, when, when you and I still were talking, and, and we still do, you know, we, we ignored Nicky Hager, <laughs> you and I. But no, I only had one person who ever said anything but from the protection of his car as he drove past. One person. And yet, if you believe the media, I was the most hated person in New Zealand politics in 2014. I thought, too, you were. Uh, but be quite tell you. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, too polite. Because only one person ever said anything. No, the good chair. And, and, you know, I, I once was uh, talking to Max Bradford just before he got tipped out of office, you know, in, in uh, when Helen Clark took over. And um, he was saying to me, oh, he says, um, I walk down the street in, in Wellington here and people that I normally bump into and talk to, they're crossing the road. I said, well, it shows you're going to lose, mate. And he, and he couldn't, he didn't, he didn't believe me. And I said, well, you'll find out. Already your phone will have stopped ringing, right? So it, come the election, your phone definitely will stop ringing. No one cares. Well, as soon as they're crossing the road to avoid talking to you, you're losing. Oh, you mean they were crossing the road to avoid him? Oh, I thought you meant yeah. the road to come and see him. Rather no, than... crossing the road to avoid him. You'd see them coming down the street, and then they'd see him, and he, they'd cross the road. And he oh, was like, oh, wait, because you're a loser. When the Zealanders are just saying now, you know, New Zealanders are inherently polite. And always, always. And it's for now, you know, I've got friends who are, who are overseas people. When they come, come here, they think it's very, it's sort of it's endearing. But after they've been here a while, they actually think that they, are, they said, no, they're not inherently polite. They're passive aggressive. You feel that they're very passive aggressive. You know? So if you get if you get Chris Hipkins turn up to your workplace because he wants to listen, he stands there in the lunchroom, you're already on the back foot. You're thinking, why don't you why don't you go away, mate? I'm having my lunch, right? And then he says, starts talking to you. You're not going to say anything. You want him to leave. Anyone who asks a question is going to encourage him to stay, you know. And so you're right. And it never works because you're pissing off most of the people. And the ones who do talk to you are usually the sycophants anyway. Well, people just want to, uh, look, I find that I think it's just, just embarrassing because someone will be get up with a pet peeve about something which got nothing to do with it there. And they go, oh, they're on your head. Just pretty shut up. Because it's just for you to hear me, you think, right? You know, and, um, you know, I'm here to listen to you. Well, don't you know, you know, um, yeah, so, so, you know, the man on the street, you know, I need to hear, they want to say, I'm busy. Can you get out of my way? Because I've got to get to work or I've got to get home. I've got to get out of my life. You're right. But anyway, look, I think the point is we expect our, pol our, our politicians to know their minds and to be convictions. You know, the one when had conviction. Look at the uh, the rising of, you know, I use some quotes for you, right? Now, look at the Farangi, the Farangi, you look at the, um, and the Le Pen and the other. What they are is, and Lev used to have it too, right? Conviction politicians. 
They say, this is what I believe. They're not trying the same with Trump. We're not trying to win the middle ground. We want the middle ground to come to us. We stand for something. And um, and I think what the uh, center left does bad, badly is they think they chase the, cent- the, cent- the center ground. And so does the center right. And that's where you have, um, in France, for example, you have a collapse of the traditional two parties, the Socialists and the Republicans, they're still here, yeah, but they're in a very small, you know, we wouldn't even think about it. So um, Macron, you know, doesn't form the, uh, the centre of his, his, his party as a way to defeat the two traditional right parties. What's happened, though, as you know, the conviction politicians of the left and right are actually what's winning the mood. So we have, you know, the Republican front and the, um, and the rally, and the Republican right rally, the Le Pen crowd, is that they're the ones who are capturing the imagination. You just see that all over the world, it's always conviction politicians who, 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 who catch them. You look uh, at the UK yeah. and you look at France, and, and, and I've seen the statement from Christopher Hipkins saying, oh, you know, this is, you know, this is great for the left. We're seeing the left um, rise. I'm not sure he's reading the same tea leaves that I am. I, I'm seeing that incumbent governments that were there when COVID was in place are being replaced. It doesn't matter whether they're right or left, right? So the Conservatives in Australia got tipped out in favour of Labour. You know, people are having second thoughts about that now. Uh, Labour's just won a massive election in the UK and think that, you know, it's because of the merits of their argument rather than everyone was just sick of the Tories. Um, with their corruption and, and nepotism and everything else that goes with, you know, UK Tory politics. Um, and then you've got Marine Le Pen surging in, you know, she in the second vote in their strange system, you know, she didn't do as well because the left... Well, and the- well quite lined up, yeah, you know, just like lined up. But you're right, like, but here's, here's the thing, and you know, it's what was the battle cry of Labour, you know? Uh, we aren't the Tories. We yeah, aren't the Tories. It's the same as, as the same as National did here in no, the last election, right. right? We like and, Labour, but less shit. And you know as well, but it is, is that, you know, government to lose, opposition don't win, you know? And, you know, the Tories have been in for 40 years. I couldn't have said, you know, is that going to go on forever? Cool, you know, we get sick of them, they won't change. And Labour won from the previous election, got two more percent. Mm. <laughs> That in mind, it's all about landslide. The first part of the post, and because the, because the vote was splitting, they came through. France was different because it was, as you would know, that after when the Gaulle post war, um, it, it's basically imperial pre, pre, presidency, and a lot of the power, certainly in foreign affairs and military, act all on the presidency. And the parliament, why well, they had that two that two step period, the Gaulle wanted to get rid of the decrees. So what they do is you all got to run and then it cut down to it and have another round between the two top because it should be the socialist and Republican, you know, who come off. And so it's a safe bet who gets the numbers. What's happening, unfortunately for them, lost with confidence, the collapse of the centre, is that the Le Pen crowd had risen and then the far left had risen. Now, and that was for weeks. So when we talk about Biden, well, the, the left, hard left, in four weeks, went from nothing to now the biggest number in Poland. That's why I think times can go like that, because then the day of social media and from news. So each country has its own reason, but your analysis is correct. It's that it's not a left-right thing, it's an incumbent and challenger. Yeah, and, and, and a fight back against what people perceive to be the elites, whether it is or not. And that's why it's strange when you see Biden came out uh, on Tuesday Saying, um, you know, oh, it's the elites of the Democrat Party, and they don't. Even if they ever got the elites, because Bernie Sanders had the numbers on the roll, so Obama and all the elites went and they pushed everyone into voting for Biden. Biden and, and Biden's the ultimate elite candidate, isn't he? He was the elite candidate, and still is. So he goes on about the elites and say, mate, 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 but we, we know it's, 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 it's desperate time for him. Look, he, I, I don't mind him, but he's just. You know, 80 years old and he looks like 100, you know? You've got yeah, him with Winston Peters, right? There's a big difference, isn't there? There's only one year difference in, in age. Uh, well, well, that well, is true. And uh, look, we're giving up on wait and wait and wait, wait for Brinkley to die. I, I, 
Yeah, I remember hearing breakfast for about a new year, 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 and I thought, and I thought he, he did then. I thought, I mean, that could be, I, yeah, he'd been in and out of Parliament. And then I didn't go, oh, he's going to be out retiring. I said, oh, been there for I said, they will take you out of this place in a box. He's never retiring. Um, and we should just get rid of that not keep that idea. Um, and it's having too much fun. Um, well, he's able, he's able to have fun because Luxon's so weak. Well, exactly. And, um, and you know, he, he's got, he's managed that centre party lower end of, of working with both major parties. Like, that, that breakdown with late label to Winston was astonishing, you know, as how that was mishandled. And when Atkins was on the ropes during the election campaign, he was bad mouthing Winston big time. We will not go in with him. And I'm thinking, well, what? Well, what? You know, learn to count. You ain't got them. And uh, I and I've uh, broken down, right? And um, you know, I was saying to the Labour crew a couple of weeks ago when they were, you know, a poll when moving forward, and I said, you know what? Here's the problem. You had a majority in your own right. You could have done whatever you like. And you did nothing. You know, we've had this discussion before. What if the lead the lead the the crack I mean um uh, the Adan government or the Hitkins government? They could, they could do whatever they like, pass whatever they like, transform the country in their own mould, and got away with it. What they they had these lofty promises and zero delivery. I mean, you promised, she promised in 2017, light rail to the airport mm-hmm. by yep. 2022, yep. and mm-hmm. it, not a single millimeter of track mm-hmm. was laid, despite and- 200 million dollars. Well, because you had the numbers in Parliament, you done whatever you like, you could have just done it. And, you know, at least you'd be able to point to think this is what we've done. And um, when Hipkins took over, and a year had a year, you just think, you just go for broke. Just go for broke. What I found amazing, Matt, is that Winston Peters, forever uh, the, the consummate middleman who was happy to work with anybody if they gave him the right deal, they managed to piss him off so significantly that for the first time in 30 years, he came out and said, I'm not working with them. I'm right. Solitary. And here's the thing, you see, with Winston, and you know that he could be true as well, right? He's old school. When he was of him, handshakes mean something. Yep. You know? And um, in by, you shake right? his hand. And he's never, I've never known him to break a deal. Mm. When he shook hands, he, he's old school and never broke a deal. And it's astonishing that Labour, when they were in government with, with, with him, did not understand their about him and mm. lied to him and told him things which weren't true. And then they get surprised that he then goes uh, fair along. Winston holds grudges. I know he does. You know, he, 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 yeah. he disliked yeah. Carter intensely. <laughs> But he was still a professional, even though he had that dislike. And he was, he's very professional on those things, yeah. But he holds grudges, and he he never lets it go until he gets you. And even no. then, he will stomp it. And so, you know, that's what I see the driver for Winston Peters behind the COVID inquiry. It's it's not so much to find out the truth of the COVID, you know, we kind of know where that's going. I think he wants to see Hipkins and Robertson and Ardern squirming in the inquiry. That's what I reckon. Well, that could be, I'm sure, but most people have gone, have gone past COVID. They don't really care anymore. They're very wrong. No, no, there's a lot of people who do care. You no, know, but, you know, the economy's suffering yeah. and from well, it now. Well, I, so, I get that. Look, you know. I, I think, you know, it's all, it's all not very matter, but my company's word. Uh, they didn't address that in the election campaign. If I'd, have done it, if I'd been Hipkin, you just narrow down trade. We did the right thing. I'm glad we did it. 20,000 20, 20, New Zealanders are alive today because we took the hard measures. Now, could, could we have done some things better? I've double all the little, 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 early, all that. Yes, we could have. But we had to say New Zealand Live. 20,000 families are watching us tonight. We say, well, we love one. And just be completely our, our, our apology. You just go for it. Now, the people who oppose them and those who have gone beyond COVID would have like, but they will have to vote against them anyway, right? What? Well, 
And they both grit and conviction. We did the right thing and we'd do it again. And we'd do it faster, we'd do it better, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And they would have got their own vote. You see, but it's that kind of thing is what we're doing now. Oh, we go around listening to you. What do you think? So, well, don't you know? You know, it's like what you're supposed to know. Well, oh, this thing's going to lead the country. You've got to know your own mind. So, you know, I think it's just a symptom of, of, of the problem. Of the centre left, and probably a bit like the centre right too, you know, the very traditional, you know. Because uh, I think they have more in common with, with each other. You know, Dow turn now, and you drink opposition. And, but what we've got is a new politics to the right of the centre right party, to the left of you know, the right turn. But they both are angry at the elite. They feel that the elite have not, they don't govern, you know. And so I'm just saying in the topic, just slightly, but the same thing. See, so someone, uh, some DJ dropped the fact, um, last night or our last night because she got sent the question to ask about Biden from 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 the White House and she asked, um, asked the questions that the White House gave to Biden because Biden could could they now the point oh on a radio show today and now he would put on the question well they all vetted the question to the RTP. So people say we do not trust the mainstream press. They're interested those who will that and this is one example. And so Biden's on the road, they give questions to put you, you know, and well, they get the answers and they know what they're And that's exactly what Ardern did, and that's exactly what Luxon does. And what they, well, I don't know the detail of that, I'll take your word, your word ready for it. But what we have is the press are used as players in the game, yep. but not, not putting, you know, holy whole, whole, power, power, power to account. And, you know, the, it's That's important. where Trump wins when he says the the media are the enemy of the people, and everyone goes, "It damn right they are." You know, <laughs> That's right. And he and we know that he yeah, well, he, like, I mean, he, he he's a braggart, and he and he, and he um, you know uh, likes to exaggerate things. But but that's what it is. Now, just before we wrap up, Matt, let's t- touch on a couple of things in New Zealand politics. What the hell is going on with the Green Party? I mean, let, let just let, we don't need to talk about specifics, right? But we've got James Shaw left. We've mm-hmm. got uh, Chloe Swarbrick um, doing all sorts of crazy stuff. You've got MPs uh, self-immolating, basically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is there a systemic problem in the Green Party? From from a backroom political operator, I really want your opinion on this. I think the word being there. Um, and- the Greens are a brand, you know, it's funny, in my the year, years ago when they first come up and, you know, we on the left who are writing them off. And I said, oh, no, brother. They're still uh, there. No, no, I said at the time, I said, they have a nice colour. All right. And that's what's going to defeat the red colour. Green is a better colour colour than red. Yeah, you know, that, that's the future. And everyone will scoff at the time. And so the Greens, you don't actually have to believe them much. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm a great. They have integrity, though. You know, Jeanette Fitzsimons and Rod Donald were highly integrous people. Yes, I know, but they came from the left. Yeah. You know, you know, real conviction for pop, 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 oppression, right? Yep. Rod came out of the, La- the Labour Party tradition. Jeanette came from the Values Party. Right, great. We are the talker into coming into the Greens. Same with. See, when the Greens formed, Rod and Jeanette joined later. When they're in the line, the Greens were in the line. So listen, our interest had competent people who ran the Greens. Mm. They're on blue, green, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the Greens themselves um, have you. You can actually have any ideological position you like. And what you've got is you've got people being elected as MPs on on um, almost like you know it's a phenomenon of individuals who vote themselves, and the Greens pride themselves on being uh, decentralized and we are over them, them, them democratic. So if people just come in because we have to have at least 50% women well, we even more at the minimum of. So the, the people they've had trouble with, and it's not a female thing, but it's just a coincidence that that's what it's been, is that people are going in underqualified, no links with politics at all, no links with the Green Party. They just come in, I'm an amazing person, they can speak at a conference and suddenly they get word well, people get word and they vote, vote for the men. And James has been doing the hard yard to the U.S. with a tradition in green politics all the way. They either um, make it like a misery by deselecting him but not replacing him and they bleed out there for months. And this is how they treat them. Oh, that's the green, that's the way we, you know, we treat people. No, they don't. They don't look after their people, but the wrong people in there. The green on yeah. Paris 
and recent, you know, we know there will be um, that they're falling like flies. Mm. Um, and what it is is one, they're not being where, where did they get the light pink people in there? And you, your father, who was involved in the National Party, but the selection of candidates, you can look at this. You can look at what are we doing here? Yeah. I don't know if they know that anything's going on. Like, oh, we don't like to do not go here. So. Well, you know, that's just careless. And then when they mess up, which they do, it's kind of like someone else has got to make the decision. Getting a lawyer in to it, you know, for 40 grand, you know, and paying the MP and sitting outside for half of the time that Jenny thinks he's in Parliament, why are they re- why are they do an investigation on the obvious, on the obvious, you know? So what are they doing? I think that there, there, there's a lack of uh, skill, there's a lack of um, responsibility back to the people who voted for them. They've allowed, it doesn't, it's about, it's about five MP the last five years have been through this project, right? And then it's kind of like, oh, well, you know, we've got to get it right. No, you knew from day one to what the problem was. Right? So yeah, right. How would you handle it, man? I mean, I've got a fair idea. You'd probably sit the 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 MP down that's been doing whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. They could have been visiting prostitutes or drinking heavily or whatever. It doesn't matter. Doesn't you'd, sit matter. Them, you'd sit them down and you say, right, fella, we've got two choices here. One involves a sword and one involves a razor. You can fall on your sword and we'll let you go with dignity or we'll cut your throat. And either way is messy. So you're a harsher man than me. I wouldn't put it quite like that. <laughs> I have a talk and I said, what's your future? Mm. And oh, I'd like to be in a minute. No, I mean, out of Parliament. What would your future be out of Parliament? <laughs> and I go, okay. No, but I, no, 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 no. I'm a messenger. I'm not a negotiator. I'm not here to negotiate. I'm here for a message, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And then I find out what they'd like to do outside of power. And then you give them a job. Help them. Say, look, we can help you because they come with skills, you see. Then they treat their manner. They treat their, you know, their, 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 their salary. You know, because most of them is the best job they've ever had. Um, like what, what, what would they say? They pay the most. They have the least work. And everyone all thinks their IQ jumped by 20 points. And they, Nerd before they went, and suddenly they can go to party, and people want to talk to them and, and hold on to their ears at every word. As you said, the start of the or uh, once they lose their job, the phone stops. We'll never then, you know. So, it, but you're right. I've had to do that to a number of MPs, and fine, it's bloodless, you know. And, and it's done with kindness, and you know, you got to move on. And you know, didn't have a press conference and say, you know, due to family commitments, you know, I've decided to resign and move on. I mean, he's tired and, you know, and, and, and he's talking about they can move with, well, with what to expect. See, but if you don't do that, this is what happens. You, you, uh, see, now what Winston quite rightly is saying to Chloe, uh, uh, the, the deputy, uh, the co-reader, saying, well, the Greens have a way out now to say we want her out, out of Parliament. Mm. Right? Will I do it? Probably not. No, probably not, because... The, the... Well, on the hand, saying, oh, well, we believe in... No, no, no. This is about the people who voted for you. Parties need to stop going on. As you and I don't know, no one knows who the DPs are when on the list. They just trust the parties, know what they're doing, they're going to put some people up who, who, who won't mess it up and will add to it. That's their responsibility. When they fail in their job to put decent people up with a balance of skill set to trust, then the party leadership has to move. They need to replace them. And a product life. What they're doing now is Rain the hands, oh, what we can do, where we just bystanders through this nonsense, why they're... Well, like they, they looked pathetic. They were begging, begging her to resign. Like They should have sat her down and said, right, what is it, like you said, what, what does it, your future look like outside of Parliament? Well, once she understands, we will move had you expelled. Mm. So that's never been put to her. So the problem the Greens have got, although hypocrisy has never troubled them ever before, no, but what they've done is, see, I assume the news items don't again, connect that soon as the great, uh, the late great you know, her, her United States Mary of the movement, she was opposed to expulsion of MPs. That was then, this is now, you know, and I, and I never agreed with Jeanette at the time, but, 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 yeah, they had this law that somehow these MPs, when they get elected, they all stink, they're so special, and they had such honor. They, no, they're just ordinary people. And some of them make mistakes and shouldn't have been in the first place, and that's the party's fault. But anyway, that's it. They should say, 
and I'm with you, I wouldn't put the razor blade and sword down because it's a bit brutal. Um, but my thing is, is with her, they say, look, this is what you need to resign because you've put us at terrible risk and damage, you've damaged us. And if you don't go, you have no choice. We'll move to have to have you expelled from Parliament. Now, if you go, so look, I, I don't I don't think it's entirely fair. My husband has it seems to have made mistakes. I was involved in the business, but I've had to take responsibility of what he did. And I'm sorry to all the supporters of Victory. That builds your goodwill. The next time that there's a committee when they're in government that may need someone on from road road board or something who no one cares that hears about. You can, could you help them help other third, right? Because that's what you do with people that are experienced. So I, I look at this, this greening pea, um, who, 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 who got expelled from the Gawker that I said, he's recently gone. You'll notice that no one from my head has come out and supported her. That's telling. Yeah. Right. That, that's her local community. Yep. Cricket. Because they all know. Tells you, tells you everything you need to know. What that business has been up to. And, and agree to know nobody, nobody in New Zealand is going to believe a word of it, of any word that comes out of her mouth that says, I didn't know what my husband was doing. It's a small no, no, but yeah, but it's a big Um, Because sometimes you just need to let two people go, you know, and they got to go with some big things. You say, look, I'm so sorry for the people who, who, who have raised these issues. There's a legal process underway. I can't speak about that. When I was going to run the parliament, I withdrew from um, uh, the business and the running business. And my husband, I left with him, but that's a failure of judgment on my side. I should have quite more way of it, you know. And, and I'm so sorry I put the green to this position in the community. And I, uh, I refer of tears, uh, hand in your resignation. And everyone goes, okay. You know, it's a good old, old gold ears, you know. It's a, yeah, I, I think. But again, you see, and I, look, I know she had her trauma, but everyone who does a crime had trauma. You know, yeah. when, when is there one rule for the poor workers who make, or working class, who make mistakes, or ordinary people who make mistakes and go to fire jail and get drink? You know, if someone from South or Auckland went round to a high street store, spending tens of thousands of dot, 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 dollars, went on a couple of hundred grand, grand a year, and then go, oh, well, I'm traumatised. Do you think that the, the judge go, oh, you poor thing. Oh, look, look, we'll let you off. Oh, it will cost me. And they clink, right? And so, you know, we've got to stop this always allowing people to make excuses for their behaviour. Yeah, and it, it, and it, it creates the impression that elites do exist because they get a soft blow through the... I have thought about it like that, yeah. So what we've had is they can dish it out and they're scraping all that and they're taking all the privilege and they get huge privileges, you know, by hitting everything and, you know, that, that, that. And she goes, oh, well, you're a dick and I wanted to get caught with it. Can you just stop doing this? Yeah, like, like she said that. I couldn't believe it when she said that. I thought, clearly, um, someone as smart as Matt McCartan's not advising her. Yeah, um, you know, because, no. because that just doesn't cut it. You know, like she says, I wanted to leave Parliament. Well, yeah, okay. we you just had an election. You could have said I'm not standing. Exactly. And so, look, I think, whatever. And people, you go with your record. You and I, you say, we come from a different school, right? In politics, in the, in, 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 in the civil society, you get involved in politics, and if you are, you know, you, you have very strong conviction and belief, and you, and you pray for all your team hardball. When you make a mistake, or you do something wrong, you cop it sweet. Yeah. You don't go and complain. No. Sometimes you just shut up and disappear for a while, why why it calms down. You don't go, oh, well, you know, I feel everything. I have mental health issues. I've, I felt like resigning. Well, just and, resign. And you say, shut you know, because no one cares. It's not about you. Yeah, and shut up. It's the door. Yeah, and look, I don't mean that, like, because I'm not a brutal person. But what I do think is about stop making it about you. You know, it's about the people who vote for you in a civil society for you to do your job. You don't do your job and you preach their values for everyone else, then it's about hypocrisy. And when you do do that, cop it sweet. Don't make it work. You know, one thing I know about you, Matt, is you speak quietly but carry a big stick. Well, I speak quietly because what are you shouting? <laughs> yeah. And then you can hit them with, well, well, with a stick. <laughs> exactly. All right, well, thanks, Matt, for coming on and shedding some Thank light you. on, the, on the, what happens in the back rooms of politics. It's always a pleasure, and we'll have you back again sometime soon. All right. All right, Matt. Thanks so much. Thanks, Matt. 
thank you for tuning in to RCR, Reality Check Radio. If you like what you're listening to, or dislike what you're listening to, either way, we want to hear from you. Get in touch with us now. You can text us with your message to 2057, that's 2057, or email us at inbox at realitycheck.radio. We would love to hear from you, so connect with us today.